Hi everybody, Steven here. If you want to learn about how I can set up uh, NSX to utilize Active Directory and my user management, stick around. That's what we're going to talk about. See you in a bit. Hi everybody. Uh, so we're back. Uh, let's jump right into it. But before we do that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. It does help out the channel quite a bit and allows me to push out content. Let's jump into it. So um, let's talk about, um, let's look at users and stuff. So I'm going to go into system here. Uh, and under user management, when you click on that, you'll see a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I see, we're under user role assignment. You'll see that we've got a, a couple of default uh, users here. We have admin and audit, right? Uh, those generally get created during the install. You also have guest user one and guest user two. Uh, they are basically local uh, users here. Uh, these ones here, um, again, you can utilize these if you want. You can rename them or whatever. Um, I want to point this one out. I'm not going to demo this, but add principal identity. What's a principal identity? A principal identity is something that you use to integrate third party cloud management solutions and stuff like that. Um, so, so this way you type in the principal identity and then you'll actually this principal identity authenticates using a certificate so again this is allowed for third-party applications to do automation like with nsx and stuff so that's kind of the idea right i'm not going to demo that that has to do with third-party solutions let's go into local users you'll actually see there are some local users the local user is the user that are created on the NSX uh, management appliance. Okay, um, it has nothing to do with Active Directory or anything like that, or LDAP or, or anything. So you'll see we've got a, a couple of local users. We've got admin and audit. Okay, looks like my password expired for audit. Who cares? There's also guest user one and two. They're not active. So you could go in and add in a local user. So I'll say add local user, and I can say add in Bob. And I say save. So I, this has nothing to do with Active Directory. This is a local user. We'll give it a few seconds to spin that up. So Bob was, Bob was added successfully. Uh, notice it's not active. So let's go over to Bob. Let's activate the user. Now it's going to ask me for a password. And again, notice the specifications on the password. So let me type in the password. And bang VMware bang and I'm gonna save that hopefully I didn't make any typos there and right now okay it's added successfully there we go right now it has the audit it'll have uh, Bob will actually have the audit role right if I go into Bob it's active um, let's go to um, yeah let's go to to roles. Actually, before we do that, yeah, you'll see that there's a bunch of default roles over here, okay? Uh, Enterprise admin is sort of like Zeus of Mount Olympus. Whoever has that can do anything they want, okay? Okay, so you see local users. I mentioned before, is maximum 14. I've got my Bob here. Now, I want to go under and I want to um, edit Bob. I want to add, add a role to it. So I'll go, uh, here's role assignment. Uh, here's Bob. Let's pick Bob. Let's edit. And you'll see roles over here. I'll click on the one. And right now it's got the auditor, right? Um, I'm going to delete this. Audit basically just read only to everything. Okay, I'll go add in role. And from here, I can add multiple roles if I wanted to. So I could actually say, you know what, uh, maybe it is a, Bob is a, um, let's say we got network operator. Okay, I could add other roles here. These are all predefined roles over here, right? Um, security operator security admin you got uh, NetX partner admin there's a whole bunch of them over here as well so and you got network admin I only gave Bob network operator let's just do network operator right um, I could also set a scope now I'm not gonna talk about this because it can get a little bit more uh, down the rabbit hole a little bit more complex I believe it was in 4.0 that what this was introduced it's called projects okay I'm gonna leave this at all projects is sort of like tenants Okay, um, you can look at it like that. So I could have a company called Acme, let's say, or whatever ABC company, and maybe I got different departments. I got marketing, sales, and engineering, 
and I want each to have their own, um, like treat it like a tenant almost, where they can manage the stuff in their environment, but they can't manage stuff in the outside of their environment. Uh, I'll probably do a separate video on that one there, okay? I'm gonna cancel this. Let's just keep it simple. So network operator soap is, is all, right? The, the scope is all. And okay, I'm gonna cancel that. And then I'll say add, oh, sorry, scope. I forgot to hit apply. Apply, add, and there we go. And I'll save it. There we go. So Bob has the network operator role. Let's go and log out. Let's log in. Now, notice I'm doing a capital B for Bob. It is case sensitive, okay? Let me type in the password. Hope I did all that right. I'm not going to bother saving it. There we go. Notice it's a dark screen and I got Bob up here. Okay. I'll leave it on the dark screen. Let's go into network. He's the network operator role. If I go into gateways here, um, notice it's grayed out. He cannot edit. He cannot add in a gateway. Notice edit is grayed out. So he cannot edit or, or add gateways or segments or any of that stuff. Okay. So great. So I just added in Bob. Let's log out. Let's log back in as admin. There we go. Okay, so I'm back in as admin. Let's skip that. Um, let's go back into system here. Let's go into user management. Um, now, let's look at roles. I just did a real quick one there, roles. There's a whole bunch of predefined roles here. You could actually add a role if you want to, or you can clone a role. Let's see if I can clone this. I can clone. Let's clone a network operator, right? So I can clone it, and I can call it whatever I want. You know, Steve operator whatever and then notice over here permissions this is where again you can create your own rules if you want to add in more permissions so under networking you see it's mixed notice uh, for connectivity it's read only for certain services it's mixed right so i can go in here this is where i can drill down and actually add, uh, add in the various um uh, permissions if i want to the various objects maybe vpns read only i want them full access natting i want them full access uh, forwarding policies maybe you know none <laughs> whatever right so this is where you can go and customize your roles or make your own roles i'm going to apply and stuff so this goes along the lines almost as roles and permissions in vSphere i wouldn't say it's as granular as the vSphere permissions if you're familiar with that but it's 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 a lot better than it used to be back in the old days didn't have you didn't have any choice here right so again, there's a bunch of roles here. You can create your own role if you want to. Call it whatever you want and then start adding in permissions, okay, for the various areas. So that gives you a lot of flexibility, which is nice. Okay, so I just talked about local users and we created one called Bob, all right? I also talked about uh, principal identity as well. See, Bob's over there. He's a local user network admin. Now I want to play with Active Directory, right? You, you're probably going to have people sign in and you know, with their Active Directory account so you can track things, right? So let's go to authentication providers and notice we can, if you're playing with VMware Identity Manager, you could integrate with that or OpenID Connect, you can integrate with that. I don't have any of those. I'm just going to add an identity source, again, the LDAP identity source, which is my Active Directory. So I'll call it uh, V class. And uh, that's just my, again, like I said, I tried to simulate my classroom environments. When I'm teaching, I could actually use my stuff as an example. So domain name, vclass.local. Uh, this is Active Directory over LDAP. Uh, I'm going to put in my base uh, distinguished names uh, so go over here. So my CN equals users, comma, DC equals vclass, comma, DC equals local. And I'm going to set the LDAP server. And I'm going to add my LDAP. And notice it's using LDAP S over here at default. So I'm going to say just LDAP because that's all I'm using. So what's my fully qualified domain name? It's control center V class local. That's my domain controller. Um, and I'm going to bind it to this account. Administrator. Can't type today. Administrator V class local and okay my password bang I'll check status there we go success 
I go add, I go apply, and I'll save it. And let's just check status again. And it's looking good. Okay, so I just actually added the, uh, the domain now. Let's go in now back to uh, user role assignments. Um, yeah, let's now add, notice over here, now it refreshed, add role from an LDAP user. So this is under user role assignment. I don't just see principal identity. I see now to add it from an LDAP user, right? So let's go add, uh, let's search domain as V class. And then the, that's the one I added in. And then search for the user. I got one there in Active Directory. I got one called Santa. <laughs> so Santa at V class, right? And then I can just go in and set the roles. Maybe I'll give Santa, I forget Santa's password. Uh, whatever, um, enterprise admin, <laughs> I'll add it in. So Santa, I trust Santa Claus, he's cool. So if I go back in here, then now if I go into, let's log out, log out. Santa at vclass.local, right? I hope I have the right password for Santa. Santa at vclass, I think it's just VMware. Don't save it. There we go. Yeah, so I'm into Santa. Clear, skip, whatever. So there's Santa. And he can do whatever he wants. I gave him the Enterprise Admin. I made him Zeus of Mount Olympus. You got gateways here. You can edit, delete gateways, all that type of stuff. Add gateways, whatever. Um, that's basically about it, folks. So it's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward to set up. Like I said, I'll do another video on um, on projects and stuff because that one come get a little bit more special. But anyways, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate it. It allows me to build more content. Um, but that's it. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now.